Hey, I'm Rick Jacket from Finger Eleven, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Leash from Ambi. I'd like to welcome you to interview with Rick from Finger Eleven. How are you? I'm very good. Just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to have a chat. Oh yeah, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to have a chat. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so you're now on the fall of the Hammer Tour, you're touring yep. across Canada. Tonight is the final night yep. of the tour here in Toronto. Yeah. How are you enjoying your time on the road? Oh, uh, it's awesome. Well, time on the road's always awesome. This time, there was a bout of illness where the whole camp got sick for about five days. Oh. Which, eh, being sick on the road is hard as it is. It's hard enough, but the worst part about being sick on the road is that it stops like the partying on the road. Do you know what I mean? Because everybody like does the thing to get healthy, and it's the smart thing to do. But it sort of takes some of the fun out of the middle of the tour. You know? Yeah. But like the vibe just kind of sizzles. Yeah, out. yeah. And then luckily we got it back. It didn't last long. Sometimes, I've, they, sometimes illness on the road lasts for a very long time, but we got lucky this time. So, the really cool thing about this tour is you actually hand selected a ton of the artists who are opening for you. Yeah. How did that come about? Were there submitting who wanted to apply, and then you kind of like just listened for a while, or how did that go over? Yeah, it was sort of a, a two-tier process. Uh, there was an online voting system that got them to like the the finalist thing, and then we would. Uh, listen to probably between five to ten finalists for each city. Okay. And uh, we picked the winner or, or you know the band we thought would be the best on the show. So, which was a lot of cool. It was a, it was cool because we, a lot of the shows, we, a lot of tours we do, uh, a band will get stuck on the show because they're friends with the promoter or they're like the promoter's yeah. cousin, and a lot of times <laughs> it doesn't suit the, the show at all. Or there'll be like a cover band, and we like to have original music out there and stuff. So this allowed us to take that power back a bit, and also. It rea the reaction from the, the bands was so great. It was uh, sort of unexpected how excited they were to be part of this. And I guess we had taken for granted that a lot of them hadn't played shows of this size kind of th before. And so there was a lot of firsts on this tour for all these oh, bands, and it was really awesome. fun. Yeah, it was. It was. It sort of reminded us of like why we. It, uh, it was just a really great environment and the thing and is they're show. applying to actually p open for you yeah, so yeah it's not just like as you mentioned like it's the promoter's cousin or something yeah it's yeah thrown exactly. on there. So yeah. that's probably why it was so thrilling yeah it was and and, and they're all so thankful and then but for us it was cool because we got to pick their brains and we got to look into their city's different music scenes and sort of see a bunch of cool stuff that was happening in canada that we weren't aware of so that it was really neat and when you were looking at them did it mainly come down to if they would suit opening for you best or did you kind of look into them as people as well what's what were you looking a for a bit more aspect? personal yeah it was a bit more like as people, as, and really just, it w didn't really have to do with us and the style of music we play, per se. It was more about, are they a good band? Like, do, are, like, do they, like, are they taking this seriously? Yeah. Are they, is this a, or, you know, and then also it was just really, a lot of times it was the song. And, and so we're such song geeks that we, we've been, we stopped listening to genres decades ago. Yeah. So it just, to us, if the song was good, that's usually what got them the win. Cool. A lot of time when bands tour, majority of the time, the tour is actually labeled after the yeah. record that they're touring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this, in this case, it's not titled after your newest record. Yeah, it's called yeah. The Fall of the Hammer Tour. Why did you decide to go with that? Well, it was a bit of like a play on words because it was the fall. And we, the hammer was sort of like the gavel for the judgment of the bands. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it was like the fall of the hammer. We're judging you. <laughs> that was, it was just that. I don't know. We decided to just not call the Five Good Lines tour, basically. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if it's because I know a lot of the time you've actually called Hamilton like your second nope, home. Nope. Because then it would be bad. Because then we'd be like saying like Hamilton's falling. And that's not. <laughs> it's that's coming not, down. That's, that's not the case at all. <laughs> no, it was. It was more about like the gavel coming down, the judgment on the yeah. on the opening bands. So. All right, cool. And then I recently listened to a playlist that you put out, which had everyone from like Ozzy to Tenacious D to yeah, Rush. Yeah. Yeah. These bands you were listening to while like going from place to place, or just people you're digging as of late. That that playlist was is sort of like a collaboration of the songs that the band was listening to on, on the road okay. for this run. So like like that's it, it goes all over the place because every one of us has very different musical styles and different musical tastes. And when we put on music on the bus after, on a ride or something, like well, everybody will fight for the iPod. And <laughs> we usually have a rule of like two songs at the most each guy because yeah. one guy will take it all the way to like the Eagles and then oh, the other guy hilarious. takes it to like, you know, rap and the heavy metal. And then it just goes everywhere. You know, it'll be like, like we got, I got on a crazy Joe Walsh kick on this tour. So I've been listening to Joe Walsh lots and then, uh, a lot of country music too. And so it, it just, it just changes. It keeps it eclectic. Yeah. Though. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's funny. It's yeah. goes back to like the whole band being a family dynamic, yeah. like, like fighting in the backseat. It's as exactly who's what, what it's like. It's, it's exactly <laughs> what it's like. It's, it's, 
that's really what we are. I mean, we, this is the first and only band we've ever been in, and it's the we've been we started in high school. And yeah. It's just it's it's like a bunch of high school buddies that have become brothers that <laughs> just get to do what they love to do. And, oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. So we don't really fight that much. If we do fight about anything, it is It's music. the iPod. It's the iPod, yeah, <laughs> it is. We'll bring it back to Five Crooked Lines. Uh, of course, you're now touring in support of the album, and you have this new material to play live now. Yeah. So how does that feel to finally have that? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, it's, it's the first run of the shows we were maybe a little self-indulgent where we were putting almost the entire record in the set okay. because we just... We're so excited. You yeah. Know? That's just the thing to do. Like, But eventually you're like, oh, we also haven't played concerts for a long time. So there's songs that other people want to hear as well. So now tonight and this tour, it's sort of the best of both worlds. I think we picked the best of the new songs that fit right in there with the best of the old songs. And there's a lot of familiarity in the set, in the set list and a, lot of, and a couple of things we haven't done for a long time. And we sort of tried to switch it up as far as uh, the vibe of the show and stuff. So. And do you feel your vibe off playing the newer stuff because you personally enjoy it more? Or is it more so you like playing some of the hits because the fact the crowd are just... Yeah, I think it's a bit of both. Yeah. I think there's um, I think there's maybe some old songs that you're like, oh, okay, I'd, I'd rather play another song, but you ultimately want to play what people want to hear for yeah. your own, even for your own ego. It's it's a nice feeling when they, and they're like, yeah, you know, <laughs> like, you, that's, that's a cool feeling. Um, but... We, you know, we we also just pay attention to ourselves, and and we sort of do what we want to do. At the at the end of the day, it's it's got to make us happy, or else it won't make anybody happy. You yeah. Know what I mean? So that's sort of sort of the philosophy. But we're not. But you know, there's nothing like playing Paralyzer because it, people dance to it and they yeah. go crazy and they sing it, and, and that's an awesome feeling. And uh, honestly, my favorite song a lot of times is one thing, and it's the most mellower of our songs but it's but it's the one that everybody's it's reached sings so to. many people and people that sing song. and they sing with passion to that song you know they're not just singing because they know the words they're singing because they had a moment with it at some point in their life or something and, and that's you can see that and feel that in the, in the audience and that's that's always exciting so and i read that for the album you actually went back to your roots you were digging far back to some of your earlier influences yeah, yeah. for you uh, when you think back to when you first started and you're first in this band even when you were rainbow butt monkeys like yeah. who were those influences for you that you were diving back to and took from on this new album well i think in the, okay so when we were the butt monkeys what was current and was influenced us heavily at the time were bands like Chili Peppers and Rage Against the Machine and Tool and these kind of like alternative but harder alternative yeah. like Jane's Addiction and these kind of bands. Ultimately, when we started our band and ever since we've been alive, bands like Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd, especially um, and Genesis and the Beatles, were all major, major influences on all of us as individuals before we ever knew each other. Like there are just those bands we all agree are the best. So on this record, there was a bit of harkening back to the 90s influences of like these kind of wicked funk riffs that like just se seemed to got lost over time that a lot of new bands don't do. And also just letting ourselves go way back and really let some of those uh, like Floyd influences sort of like shine and like, like let not be ashamed of just like, like listen, man, we love these guys. They're the <laughs> best. And, and, and so, the, so the, the, we just sort of allowed ourselves... Um, you know, we found that over the years that sometimes we got talked out of uh, times when we started to touch too close to someone, an influence. Yeah. And the co it was usually the compromise was like a watered down version of it. So it was it, it just wasn't as special. So this time it was like, we're just no, gonna no, go for we're it. Just gonna go for it. Yeah. yeah awesome. Exactly. We're mm -hmm. hard on our scenes, yeah. <laughs> There's a song called Not Going to Be Afraid on the record. Yeah. And uh, everyone's really digging it. It's been amazing to see the response, people relating. Yeah. And it's basically a song about change. And yep. as a band, from the beginning of your career, you've had a lot of changes going through, especially as of late. Yeah. So I was curious, what do you think is the best change that's happened to you guys for when you were working on this album? Um, you know what? Unfortunately, one of the better changes was the band member change. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a hard thing to say, and it's not what the way you want things to work out but things were just not working properly so when that happened when that changed uh it became the four of us again which were the original four members yeah. of the band and it just started to work that way again like what it did at the very beginning where we didn't really have to think about it and it just happened and it, there was just a open lines of communication and open lines of creativity that just sort of would just flow out of us and next thing you know we had written twice as many songs in half as much time you know and it just it's sort of that's where on this album especially it just sort of started to take off you yeah know? yeah that, that was that was the biggest thing and that's when that song was written and that's what the song scott um 
he just released a statement yesterday. I read it. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like coping with the change. Coping with the change. It, well, it's 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 looking at an unchangeable situation and and deciding to stand up to it instead yeah. of letting it take you down. You know, and, and that was one of those moments. It's like, wow, we weren't even a working band. We didn't have a full roster, but we still have to be a band and make a record somehow. And and that song came out of it. So. That was even just for that song alone. The whole moment was pretty special. Oh yeah, it's such yeah. a great track. Yeah, yeah, it really is. <laughs> I not, love, I love just, hearing <laughs> bands when they're like, "Yeah, it's a good song." Well, I'm just. Pr- <laughs> I mean, we're proud of everything we do, but like, yeah, I, I there's certain songs in our career that, from the ins- their inception, have given me a certain feeling, and that's one of them. So I'm, I'm super proud of it. Awesome. Well, and over the past few years, you've also had songs featured in WWE, and yeah. I just wanted to bring that up because I'm a big wrestling fan. I know nice. some of the members are as well. Are you yes, a wrestling oh, fan? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Awesome. So I just wanted to ask you then, who is your favorite wrestler? Some of your favorite wrestlers, whether they're current or older. Well, see, okay, I'm I come from like the like the Hulk Hogan era of okay. wrestling, right? So to me, the one <laughs> the one wrestler that always was awesome was the Ultimate Warrior, and then is before he passed away. I don't know if you followed it, but his Twitter account was amazing. Amazing. He was a hilarious guy, and he had this, like, no fear kind of, like, he attacked everybody. <laughs> and he was funny, too, so he was just this. And he's, like, and, and no one wanted to mess with the Ultimate Warrior, yeah. right? He's the Ultimate Warrior. So he, he was always entertaining to me. Um, I mean, honestly, like, through, like, like Kane was one of these things. Like, that, it, what happened with the wrestling song was that, it, it's the opportunity sort of got passed down to us from another band and when we got asked if we wanted to be part of it we were like well it's such a huge opportunity but who's left like we were sort of like i don't want to write a, a wrestling song for like you know like some of the wrestlers to be yeah. honest with you because you know? how it's like how do you write a cool song for like I there's so many <laughs> I don't want to I don't I don't want to you don't, bash I don't, any wrestlers, but I don't but you know there's just some characters that you don't want to you don't want to have the theme song for right you know what I mean like gold dust I don't want to have the theme song for gold <laughs> dust you know what I mean like that's like how are you going to write a cool song for that anyways when we found out Kane was available still we were like yes 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 like if, if, only if we can do Kane and at that time we had no idea that, that his wrestling plans included like him taking his mask off and yeah. becoming the champion all this stuff we just knew that we could write a really cool heavy riff, like like we well we we instantly thought of was uh, the Imperial March by Darth Vader, like the da 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 da, just something that he can like just sort of come out to it and be really tough Go to. Badass. And yeah, yeah, walk. you know, and that was sort of the that was fun, like that yeah. was a really fun way to write music, and uh, we were really happy with the song, and then we got into this weird situation where we were. They were going to use it, and they weren't going to use it, and they were going to use and it. And I saw you were at a bar, and you yeah. saw... I read the whole oh, story, and I was like, that was awesome. is amazing. It was awesome. It was the coolest thing. We were at a bar, and we are just... I think we were bummed, because I think when it had been left to us, like, that they weren't going to use it. Yeah. So we were like, oh, that sucks. But we like the song, so it'll live on. And then all of a sudden, we just hear, like, boom. And <laughs> I, I only know that I... I knew it because we we knew the old version well enough to know that it wasn't the old... I was like, that's not the old version. Oh, my God. That's our version, and then we're all. It was the coolest. That's incredible. It was. It was cool, and then and then from that point on, like I said, he went on to become like a superstar. For oh, the next, even now, yeah, tied yeah. into the storylines like yeah. corporate Kane and like everything. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. So we were part of that whole rise, and that whole opportunity was amazing for us because not only was it neat as a as a lifelong wrestling fan to be in part of that world, and we got to you know meet him and go into like oh, that's because so cool. that year WrestleMania was in Toronto, so we went to like the, the the conference and we hung out, met a bunch of people, you know. And uh, and we've had some really fun times with other wrestlers too. Like we've met we met them because the weird thing about wrestlers and musicians is that they're they both they have a lot in common. Like you have to oh, be, yeah. you travel all the time and you're sort of, so a lot of times like you run into some wrestlers like in like a hotel lobby, you know, and it'd be like because they're just on their day off and you're oh just on your day off. And you're yeah. like, no way, and then you start hanging out. I remember when Brock Lesnar came on. We were on Seven Dust b- Bus and we were just hanging out, having drinks, and he came on. This is before he was like. Had all the heat uh, and everything. Yeah. He wasn't. He was like just getting signed, and he took up the entire width of the bus. It was insane. Like wow. he was so big, <laughs> and the seven dust guys are big, and yeah. this, he couldn't. Like he just he was standing there, and, and you just he blocked the entire <laughs> yeah. bus width. It was insane, but uh, yeah, no, it was cool. But th- also the thing about the wrestling, uh, the, it was the amount of people that exposed the band to just yeah, like a course. huge global audience that that g- gave us a lot of uh, attention, which is great. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I've been, I was so curious about <laughs> yeah, that. Thank for sure. you. Just <laughs> to wrap everything up today, for all your fans who are going to be viewing our interview, is there anything you'd like to say to all of them who will be watching? 
I don't know. Just uh, <laughs> check out the new record if you haven't checked out the band for a while because it's some good it's stuff. It's awesome. Yeah. It's definitely not lying. It's very good. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. <laughs> you know, See, it's official, a good endorsement. The special handshake. Yeah, yeah. The first thank one was a little like. Thank you so much for your time. We're so stoked we could do this. So very thank cool. you. Well, Remember, for everyone, you can visit us at amusicblogger.com for exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so, so, so much more with your favorite bands. See you next time.